Today we have Polly Owen, Director of CCSG Technical Assistant and Outreach at Imagine Institute. And now I would like to turn it over to Polly for an overview of the Child, child Care Stabilization Grant. Polly. Thank you so much, Christina. Hi, everyone. Um, as Christina said, my name is Polly Owen, and I am the director of the CCSG Technical Assistance and Outreach Program at the Imagine Institute. Um, what we do at the Imagine Institute is provide a wide variety of supports for child care providers, and we have lots of programs. I'm going to be sharing a couple of those with you tonight. But first, we're going to get started with that uh, child care stabilization grant. Is there a way for me to share my screen, Christina? Perfect, thank you. All right, so here is our landing page on our website. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and navigate over to that section that addresses the child care stabilization grant support that we have. So for those of you that don't know, um, the child care stabilization grant is a program that is available um, to all licensed and FFN providers in Washington state. Um, this provides funding to help you stabilize your business. And again, the eligibility requirements are that you are open and in good standing. You will have to um, agree to some attestations, including staying open through uh, the end of this fiscal year, which is June 30th, 2022. Um, once funding is dispersed, you do have a year to come to spend that funding and you are able to go back and include any expenses that you incurred starting January 1st, 2021. On our website, we have a variety of how-to videos to help you kind of self-help, walk yourself through things um, if you wanted to do this on your own. Those include a documentation and spending guide, which addresses the different uh, allowable uses of these funds and how you need to document those expenses if you are to get called for receipt collection. There's also um, a walkthrough of the application and all of these videos are available in Spanish, English, and Somali. Um, there's also a how-to video for the FFN application, as that is housed on a different platform. So there, um, like I said, for the eligibility for licensed, you have to be open and in good standing. It's that simple. For family, friends, and neighbors, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, you have to have had a child in your care that is receiving subsidized payments through the state. And that you have to have served a child on subsidy in four of the last six months or two of the last three months. And you have to have claimed that subsidy uh, through your invoice through the SSPS system. So grant funding distribution. This grant is open through June 30th, 2022. I cannot believe that we have a little bit over six weeks before this closes. Um, the way that the payments work, so any applications submitted before 8 a.m. on the second Monday of the month. So right now we are currently looking at the second Monday in June, which I believe is the 7th. Anything that is submitted, or sorry, the, the 6th, anything that is submitted before 8 a.m. on that day, it would be processed in that month and would be paid out that next month. If it's submitted after that date, then it'll get processed in the next month. So where we're at right now, if you apply by June 6th, you should receive your payment sometime in early July. And then anything that is in that last bucket um, before between the 6th and June 30th, that would be paid out most likely the beginning of August. On our website, we also have links to a lot of different tools that you can use, um, the application guide, uh, frequently asked questions, which has a lot of those common questions that come up, and also some helpful links down here. Um, again, TAs at the Imagine Institute, we are open Monday through Friday. We have people live on the phone who can support a wide variety of languages. Um, if we don't have someone who speaks the language that you need um, fluently themselves, we are able to offer tele-interpretation. So we uh, can support pretty much any language that comes to us. Um, our TAs are able to help you walk through the application, 
understand the documentation and spending portion of this, what is an allowable use, what isn't, how, what, how can you navigate through that. And also, we are able to give you guidance as to what receipt collection would look like if you were one of the people that was selected to provide your receipts at the end of the grant cycle. So I would love to open this up uh, for questions. It looks like there's been some, but. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I know, um, I, and I have, I have one. I know you pointed to a, an application video link. Like, what uh, kind of materials or documents do people have to prepare uh, for that application? So the application is extremely easy. Um, this application. Let me see if I can just open this up. So it's all multiple choice. There are no narrative questions involved in this, and I'm sure that's tiny. So let me just see if I can get this up there a little bit. Um, so when you walk through, you're gonna log into, and this is for licensed, again, FFN, it's, it's a similar application, but it is housed on a different site um, because they do not have access to Walk Compass. So for licensed providers, you're going to log into your Walk Compass portal, click on your grant information tab, this is the same place that providers would go um, for, you know, different, basically any grants that are offered through the state. All right. Oh, I see we have an FFN. I will show that one next. Perfect. Um, so then you're going to click on current grants and it will show you the child care stabilization grant. If you've already applied, this is going to say true right over here on the right. But for those of you who haven't applied yet, it's going to say false. So you would click on the grant, the blue letters, and it'll open up this application. And so the beginning of the application is just going to give some grant amounts. And again, you do not request an amount. It is calculated for you. There are um, a few different metrics that go into that based on your uh, licensed capacity, um, and your area, your zip code. Um, there's some things that play into the early achievers and those sorts of those sorts of things as well. And then, like I said, it's just some demographic questions. These do not impact the amount of your grant. This is just data collection. So there, there isn't a wrong answer here. They are just looking to see who are you serving? How many children in each age group? But the answers on this it, let's say that you're someone who your enrollment is low because you've been impacted by the pandemic. A lot of people are concerned that if they report that they're only serving two or three children, it's going to lower their amount. It will not. It goes based on your licensed capacity, not your current enrollment. And then you're going to reach the spend plan. This is where you get to select which categories you think you're going to spend your money on. Um, and so it's a good idea to really think about what are all of the things I might want to spend this on and include those when you do that checklist. And then you're going to go into those attestations that we talked about. You're just going to read through these, make sure you understand what you're agreeing to. Um, but, you know, in correct information, staying open, implementing, I mean, all of those things. Make sure you read this really carefully. And again, our technical assistants can review this with you. So if you're reading this, and you're really not sure what you're agreeing to, reach out. We can help you understand that because it's really important. We're not talking about a small amount of money um, with these grants. So definitely make sure you understand it. And then you just click submit. It's, it's a very simple application. It really is just checklist. <laughs> so <laughs> this one has been designed to be really accessible. That's nice, because um, I know that like other small business grants in the past have been very complicated. Thus the question. I was like, what do we have to be prepared for? So thank you. So glad that it's a, an easier application. Okay, we've got some hands up. Um, I know, Lori, you've had your hand up for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can get you to talk here. So if you can unmute yourself, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Hi, Lori. Okay, I just want to make sure you can hear me. Yeah. I have a question. I'm a friend, family, and neighbor, and I came on here because I tried to file my taxes. D D C Y F sent me a, a N E S form, and I filed that on my taxes. And it takes me to a Schedule C form to fill out for a business. And I do not have a business. I watch my granddaughter. And it will not let me file my taxes. 
until I fill out this form and I am so lost. I have contacted Image Institute. I have contacted my caseworker through um, DSHS, um, DCYF, and nobody can seem to help me. And I'm late on filing my taxes because it won't let me move past this Schedule C form. Okay, Lori, I am not aware of this of that that issue. I, this is the first time I've heard that particular scenario. But what I would love to do, um, if you would like to, let's see, what's the best way that you can put your information into the chat? Because I I can reach out to the grant administrator. Um, I actually have a meeting with them first thing tomorrow morning, so I can see what answers I can get and who I can connect you to for support on that. So why don't, Polly, why don't you put your contact information or where you want Lori to uh, reach out to you? And then, um, Lori, if you can take down that information, then uh, you guys can get connected, hopefully, sooner than later. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Lori. All right. The next hand we have up is uh, Patricia Terry. And I think you should be allowed to, uh, I think you just need to unmute. Okay. There you go. Okay, um, I've been um, a family, friends, and neighbor, I guess, child care provider for the last, well, since last October. And in order for me to file, uh, fill out this application, where do I need to go to do that online? Or do I need to get a paper one sent to me? So it can only be submitted online. Um, I'll go ahead and open up that application guide, but I'm sure that uh, you know Carly Carly Meek is here as well. You'll you'll talk to her in a few moments. She is one of our program leads at our CCSG team, and she is just an incredible person. So I'm sure she's already working on getting you the link to that application in the chat. Uh, okay. But where you're going to do that is in uh, something called Smart Sheets. So. I'm sure she'll put it in there, but um, it's actually just, it's a, it's an open application. So um, that's when that, you know, you it's not specific to you. Um, so one link works for everybody. Um, and what your application looks like is this right here. So it's very similar, but um, it it's just a little bit like, it's it, it doesn't have the same visual effect that the other one does, but it has very similar questions. Um, there are some things that you do not have to do. Um, you know, your grant amounts are a little bit different. Um, there is not a program amount um, or a workforce amount, but there are the, um, you know, the child care desert add-ons and those sorts of things. Um, sorry, there isn't the workforce amount. You do have a program amount of $750. I misspoke on that. And then in your questions, it's similar. Just what are the ages of children? Um, not really the number of how many. Um, you know, are you currently ch caring for children? Um, how many up here instead of that breakdown where they wanted to know how many by age type? So it's just a little bit different there. And then you go right into your spend plan, the different things that you might want to use this funding for. And again, it's always better to, to think more than less. Um, so really think through how many different things might you be using this money for when you fill this portion out. And then this is just a guess. This is just some data collection. Again, this will not impact the amount of your grant, but they are wondering about what your operating costs are. So how much money are you spending on the children that you're caring for? And then again, you also have terms and conditions. Um, your attestations are just a little bit different, but make sure you read through those and understand those. And then you're going to submit it. You should receive an email letting you know that your grant was submitted. Um, make sure you're checking your spam, your promotions, your all of your all of your folders because I feel like I've seen them go everywhere. <laughs> um, uh, but definitely, you can check and see if it's been submitted, and then you can follow up with us as well. We are able to reach out to the grant administrators and verify that your application did go through. So. I hope that answered your question. Um, right. One more thing. How long, how long would it take for your application to be submitted? So once you hit submit, it goes off to the state. 
So there it, it, there it is. It's, it's now submitted. Um, what we typically see is, you know, we, we get a report daily um, on our license. We do have to get that report a little bit because this form it doesn't have any logic in it that prevents people from filling it out multiple times or entering in incorrect information. The, the data we get on FFNs takes a little bit longer, but I am able to reach out on an individual basis and confirm, but it should within 24 hours um, be verifiable that it was submitted. All right, thank you, Polly. And I don't see any other hands up. I, I do have a question because I know um, just from our experience working with businesses, not everybody has a computer. Probably everybody on this call has a computer, but if they don't, I know there's only online only applications. Um, is there a way that people who don't have access to a computer, what, what would you recommend for them? So this is one that is pretty easy to fill out on a smartphone because there isn't any sort of narrative uh, data that you need to put in. So, you know, there, it's just that checklist. Another thing that you can do is reach out to us. One of our technical assistants, we are unable to fill it out for you, but we are able to provide support. So, you know, we could potentially meet up with you or, you know, meet you somewhere and help you use a device. Um, you know, we could help you walk through, maybe if you have a friend who would let you use their computer, we can set up Zoom and and screen share and really support you in getting that application completed. All right, super. Okay, we have another handout and this one is Roxana. All right, Roxana, I think you just need to unmute and you will be uh, you will be on. Um, yes, can you hear me? We can, yes. Good. Um, I actually, I'm calling for my mother actually. Um, I'm on the line, I'm sorry for my mother because my mother doesn't speak um, English, but I wanted to get more information hopefully on this one first before she sees the Spanish one and maybe gets confused. Um, <clears throat> but um, she's an FFN to my son. Um, our caseworker told us, my mother's caseworker, I'm sorry, or my son's caseworker told us that we have to wait to apply until the 31st of the month. I don't know why she gave us that date, but I it's open as an FFN now, right? So why would is there a reason why I have to wait until the 31st of the month? So it could potentially be uh, depending on when your mom started providing care. There, there was okay. a metric that I touched on at the beginning um, where mm -hmm. you had to have served the child two out of the last three or four out of the last six months. Is okay. your is this kind of new that your mom's been watching your child? Yeah, she's she's received. Um, yes, it's it's been two out of the last three months, I believe. Her, so that's probably why your mom's eligibility will most likely show up in June. Then, um, if if that's okay. the scenario, yeah. Okay, so if she waits until after the thirty yeah. first, she should be yeah. fine because she's still in the same um, yeah. still before the deadline, which is the June thirtieth yeah. deadline. Correct. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, now, my mom is an FFN, um, and uh, I know that there's another grant for special needs, correct? Oh, sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, yes, yes. We're going to be talking about that one next. We will. Okay, okay. Um, but before we move on to this, so so this grant, the 750, it could be used, Is it, it's different than a licensed provider. There are certain categories of what you can be used, but those, she needs to keep track of those because it's not a licensed facility, obviously she's taking care of my my son here in my home. Right. Um, and she can use, I mean, it can be based on these expenses that she acquires taking care of him. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. So this, this list that I have up here, these are the spend plans. Within those, there are different allowable expenses, but one of the things um, that is really amazing about this particular grant, uh, mm -hmm. it, a lot of times with child care, there, there's this thing called a time space percentage. So you're only mm -hmm. able to use a certain percentage of your home. Um, but with this grant, you can actually include the entirety of your rent or your mortgage, the entirety mm -hmm. of your utilities, and those are all allowable expenses. Um, so okay. you know, it's pretty broad. It's It's been set up to be really broad so that hopefully people are able to easily find um, enough expenses to spend their grant awards on. So then the rent, um, for example, we'll just say um, uh, rent, um, she would keep the receipt of the portion she pays, for example, yes. if she yes. helps me out. 
Um, yes. And then she, she would, if she, if we were to get audited, then she would be having, oh no, I use that grant to pay for this. Yep, exactly, exactly. An, okay. okay, okay. So again, the same thing as a license, we'd have to have um, obviously track of this money. Where did it go? Right, right. So yeah, yeah. If, if you were, so they will sample 10% of awardees and um, then what they will ask is that you just provide the receipts that show what, what port, you know, what you spent your funding on. Okay. Um, and now this goes directly paid through the um, SSPS or is it something else that she gets in the mail separate? So whatever method she is currently being paid, um, that that is how she would receive her grant funding. Okay, okay. So she gets them in the mail. So it'd be a same thing, a check via mail. Okay, okay. And then you're going to be speaking about the other program you said after this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Roxana. All right. We do have a couple minutes before we move on to the complex need funds. We have uh some other raised hands uh i'm hoping i'm pronouncing your name right is it elodia and i'm going to go ahead and allow you to talk and then you should just need to unmute yourself uh yes uh, uh this is tony for elodia we have um a center that we just opened on april 27 uh and we have the capacity for 20 children it's infants to waddlers 30 months zero to 30 months Will I be able to apply for these grant? Yes, absolutely. So the child care stabilization grant, we um, do you, once you are in Wa Compass, so once your Wa Compass account has been set up, you should be able to locate that grant in that location. Excellent. Thank you. That's all I have. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, I think Roxanne, I think uh, did you have another question? If not, you can lower your hand or there you go. All right, perfect. Well, let's, I, I know there's a lot of uh, questions being posted in Q&A and Carly is doing a great job at answering those as well. So we've got double duty going on here, but again, I'm reminding everything is being recorded um, and we will send the transcripts of these Q&A as well to everyone um, that is on the call today. So Polly, are you ready to go into the complex needs fund? I am, I am. All right, take okay. it away. All right. Um, I will just say there's also, uh, I missed this part. Uh, we do have links directly to those applications, the you know, Walk Compass here and um, the FFN link on our website. So if you go okay. to this page on our website, those are right at the top. Okay. And I just saw there was another question. You want to go ahead and take that real quick before we go or do you want to? Sure. sure. All right, Michelle, I'm going to go ahead and uh, allow you to talk and I think you just need to unmute. Give you a couple seconds or yeah. <laughs> All right, Michelle, we'll, we'll remember your question or post it in and we will uh, go ahead and why don't we go ahead and just move on to the complex need fund. Okay, so complex needs fund. This one does operate a little bit differently um, than the child care stabilization grant. So the complex needs fund, this is a fund that is available um, to address complex needs. So if you have children in your care currently who um, have developmental delays, disabilities, behavioral needs, or other sorts of unique needs that lend um, them to need additional support, uh, that is what this is meant for. Now, in terms of eligibility, this grant will have multiple rounds. Um, in this first round, it is only being offered to licensed or certified child care providers who are currently open and in good standing and who have served at least one child receiving state subsidy through the SSPS system for at least one month between September 1st, 2021 and February 28th, 2022. And you have submitted your invoice for payment by March 31st, 2022. 
I'm going to pause on this screen for a moment because I know that that is quite the metric. And uh, that's one that, you know, you might need to take a little bit to digest and remember. Um, you also need to currently have children enrolled with behavioral needs, developmental delays, disabilities, or other unique needs. I want to make sure to make it clear that this does not require that a child has a diagnosis. This includes needs beyond things that are typically diagnosed. Um, so again, behavioral needs, other unique needs, things like that, those would be included in this grant. So what can this grant be used for? You can use this for staffing, therapeutic services, facility improvements to comply with ADA accessibility requirements or behavioral needs, supportive and adaptive materials and equipment, or providing additional training for your teachers. It may not be used for capital expenses such as major construction or renovation projects or support to sites other than the licensed certified site to which the fund was granted. So application information, unlike the stabilization grant, this is a competitive grant. So this is one that, you know, you will, they will review all of the applications before um, awarding uh, any of the funding. So make sure you keep that in mind. It's, it's a little bit different than the stabilization grant. You're going to need to require or answer questions about your program and what you're wanting to do with the funding. There is a full rubric available that walks you through um, what each topic that they, they want to address has and, and what they're looking for. So it does give you a, a, an idea of how to get the highest points possible in those questions. And that rubric is available in three languages. So again, it's available in Spanish, English, and Somali. Um, another thing that's uh, pretty amazing about this grant is it is designed for people who have no grant writing experience. They will not be deducting any sort of points for grammar, spelling, punctuation, any of those things. The grant can be submitted in languages other than English, so you do not have to submit your answers in English um, if that's a need for you. Um, you can submit it in the language that you're comfortable writing in. Um, and again, just that competitive grant piece, we want to make sure that you understand that this all applications will be received the application period will be reviewed, they are not reviewing them until they have all been submitted. So you do not need to rush to get your application in on this. Um, obviously, make sure that you get it in in the right timeline. But um, the first person who submits their application is going to be reviewed with the same level of attention to detail as the last person who submits their application, as long as it's submitted within that timeline. So talking about those timelines, the grant application opened last week on May 11th. The application will be closing on June 21st, 2022. So a little under six weeks from now. Uh, sorry, the scoring team is going to meet late June, early July of 2022, and they will be announcing their decisions shortly thereafter. If you are someone who is selected for an award through this grant, those payments will be processed about two to four weeks after you are notified that you are a recipient of this grant. Some other details, um, the minimum amount of money that can be requested for this is $5,000. The maximum amount of money that can be requested under this grant is $100,000. However, if someone had a very compelling need that exceeded $100,000, it may be considered. So again, this one is going to be through Walk Compass. So the same location that you would find the Child Care Stabilization Grant, it's going to be on that Available Grants tab, and you will be able to see that application in there. Now, if we're going to take a quick look at that application, let me find my link to that. That's the scoring rubric. Okay, just one moment. I'm gonna bring it over from my other screen. Okay, and so on the DCYF website, they have um, an application preview and question guide available. 
They have the Complex Needs Fund Manual, which walks you through the details of this, an application step-by-step -step guide, that scoring guide, and an informational presentation that you can watch. We are also able to provide both group and individual TA sessions. Um, we do have a grant writer who is supporting all of our TAs. So any higher level questions, um, they are available to kind of help troubleshoot those. So when you contact one of our TAs, not only have they already been trained in how to use this rubric and how to assist you, but they have the support of a certified grant writer behind them as well. So just taking a quick look at the step-by-step -step guide, it's going to look similar to the stabilization grant. You're going to find it in the same location, like I stated, under that current grants tab. You're going to select the complex needs fund. This one is going to give you the option to select what language you want to view the application in before it opens. So you will need to select either English, Spanish, or Somali before you proceed to look at the application. Now, once you get here, these little boxes are going to be all over this because this is one where you will need to answer some, some narrative text. So you can drag this over to make those boxes bigger. Otherwise, as you're typing in here, you kind of get lost and you can't see everything you've typed. So that's a good tip to remember. Um, again, when you select one of these options, what will happen is this is gonna be the view when you initially look at the application. When you select one of these boxes, the rubric's going to pop open. So, um, sorry, not the rubric, but the, the question is going to expand. So you will then be prompted to ask a series, to answer a series of questions on what you are asking, what you are going to be doing with the funding that you're requesting. So you're going to want to describe based on which of these options you select, um, you're going to want to fill this out with your estimated costs, how you got that estimate, where it came from, um, definitely citing your sources, those sorts of things. And again, those are all things that our TAs can assist you with. So just to kind of give you some comparison on this, we're going to look at the rubric really quickly. Because again, this is going to be your map to filling out that application. So we just saw that therapeutic services section. And this rubric is going to tell us how we need to answer those questions to get the most points possible. So under therapeutic services, we would want to make sure that we are addressing um, every, you know, you're, you're shooting for this, this fourth box over here. This is the five point box. So as you answer those questions, make sure that you read through this rubric and kind of use your answer or tailor your answer to this five point answer. So are you including a clear example of how this is going to target care and support children with complex needs? Are you going to have some references um, that show the research and the planning that you put into this request? So this is something that all of our TAs have been trained on and uh, that they can help you walk through that you know, they can help you get the most points possible. Um, there are some additional points that will be awarded um, that you do not need to apply for if you are someone who is providing care in an extreme child care access desert, or you are serving or located in a marginalized low income community. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> and again, we are always available to help you understand this information, to walk you through it. Um, I don't, I, I think I, I would love to meet anybody who could memorize all that that quickly <laughs> and tell me your secrets. So uh, I would love to hear any questions that I can answer. Sure. And thank you for going over the rubric, because I think because this one is competitive and um, understanding what that can make, what can make your application more competitive, I think is, is critical. You mentioned um, research um, to be quoted in the, the most competitive. Is, is there a resource on uh, that you all have of, uh, of research and that, that could be used or leveraged for these applications? So we have several, depending on which of the topics you're wanting to address. Um, we have different resources and different tools that we can recommend that you utilize. Um, you know, for example, with staffing, uh, we located this great tool that QuickBooks has that kind of gives you an estimate. Um, because really, we know that it, the cost, it, you know, when you pay someone 
a certain amount per hour, that cost is actually a little bit higher to you as the employer. So this gives you a calculator where you can lay that out and you can look at how much um, that, that will actually impact your expenses. Um, and so we have other things like the ADA guidelines um, that you can use to research and see what you need to do. Um, so yeah, we have, we have several of those. There aren't any that are just a solid recommendation from DCYF, um, but we can definitely point you in the direction of different resources that you could use. All right, perfect. Now we have some hands raised and I know uh, Carly's been really busy over there on the Q&A box. So uh, I'll just go to the top of the list. Patricia, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask you to unmute. Okay, once again, um, I plan on applying for the child care stabilization grant because I do have two boys. Now, because one of my kids he has a hard time seeing because he has he has a hard time of learning and he wears glasses. Could I also apply for that um, complex needs funding too? So this round, um, they are this one is only open to licensed providers who have served a child on subsidy within that that time frame that was listed. However, there will be two additional rounds of this funding next fiscal year. Um, so the state's fiscal year runs from July 1st to June 30th of every year. So there will be two additional rounds, and they have stated that they are looking at opening up this funding to FFNs in one of those future rounds. So the, the short answer is not this round. The long answer is let's keep our eyes out for the additional rounds that roll out and see um, if if those will include uh, FFNs. Okay. Not now. Yes, unfortunately. Right, thank thank yeah. you, Patricia. All right, we're going to go next to uh, Roxana. Okay, so mine is a little bit, I guess, complicated as well. Um, just to make sure these grants are not income based, correct? This is no. just a grant? Okay, so it doesn't affect regardless my mother's, for example, social security or any savings that little oh. that she okay. might have. I, I apologize. I thought that you meant that you had to have a certain income threshold. To no, no, my mother, because my mother's gonna apply. If, if my mother applies, she would apply for my son. Right, right. But now my mother, she is an FFN, but previously she was a licensed uh, provider. So she very easily can reinstate her license because she was in good standing for close to 20 years. But my mother is currently as uh, working as an FFN for taking care of my son. Um, and my son has a language delay um, and a global developmental delay. Um, but she's not a homeowner, so technically she cannot be an act. She's not take. She cannot be in a certified license because she doesn't own a home. So can she still have her certified license, take care of my son as an FFN, not have a facility that she's providing licensed care, but she's providing FFN, but she has her license and apply for this program for my son. So I would love to talk further with you about this offline because that, yeah. there, there are a lot of nuances in there that I yeah. don't feel confident answering. I would need to research and look into that. Um, and and so, things that my son would probably be you, you, I'm utilizing that my mother could, if she gets this grant, would be therapeutic services, such as services that are not unfortunately covered through many insurances, unfortunately, such as like equine, um, hippotherapy, even an adaptive device, because he's not verbal currently, um, such as a, a, a speaking adaptive device. So I'm sure these, those are things that would qualify, correct? I, I think I saw those on there, adaptive communication devices. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. therapeutic services so she can very much use that in a way to kind of give him those services that he is not able to get any other way. Yes, yes. Uh, however, again, I would I would need to look into that and we would need yeah. to find out because because it sounds like she has closed her license. Yeah. Um, so I because yeah, we, I that, there's a lot I would just need to look into, but yeah. I would to you it's a little messy you. situation. Yeah. So it might not work for us at the moment because if it was just a simple reinstating her license, but then she's obviously she doesn't have a home, so she cannot be a licensed provider if she doesn't own a home. Well, so we will be 
let's put a pin in that because um, you, you can get permission from your landlord um, and then be able to be licensed. You don't, you don't actually have to own a home. A home ownership is not a requirement of okay. licensed child care. You just have to have permission of uh, the site owner. Um, but oh, I see. And if it's just taking care of my son, there shouldn't probably will not be an, an issue because there is no other children within um, my mother's care. Again, uh, we'd have to we'd have to look into that. Um, but I mean, you know, depending on your personal situation, um, we are going to do a, a quick touch on one of our other programs in a minute. Um, Imagine okay. you, which is that program that we have that helps people get licensed. So let's uh, we can talk about that in a few minutes and see if maybe that's something that would be beneficial. Okay, and this might be a great time, Polly. To I know, um, how can people contact you with these complex uh, situations? Because everybody, I'm sure, this is always hard to navigate. What's the best way for them to contact you? I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat: ccsg at imaginewa.org, or call us at. Um, I'm going to put the phone number in here: uh, three six zero. Or sorry, two zero six four nine two five two four nine. Um, again, we have live technical assistants on the phone available. They are online typically from about eight to six, Monday through Friday. Um, they are live with Spanish, English, Somali, Korean, Arabic, Americ. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting some, I'm sure. Um, Swahili, uh, we, we have a, a wide range of live languages. And then we also have that teleinterpretation option for people that need help in, an, in a language that we don't have someone that speaks. All right, and we have a, another hand up and I'm again, hoping I'm pronouncing it right. Apologies if I don't. Uh, Seda Alam, I'm gonna go ahead and allow you to talk. I think you just need to go ahead and mute and you're on. Hi and good afternoon. Uh, my question I posted earlier. I I didn't know the that you were covering both um, stabilization and complex grant. So I posted my question earlier, and my question is around serving children with behavioral um, issues um, currently or in the year past. Does it, do I have to still be serving the child because I had to let my child go because I wasn't able to care for as the need was beyond my capacity and I couldn't hire another individual because one, I, I didn't have additional resources uh, and that is before this stabilization grant came on board. So looking back, there are many resources I could have utilized or used had I had funding to maintain that I care for that child because uh, I am a mental health therapist, but I wasn't practicing at the time. Mm. So my question is, do I have to have the child in my care in order to apply for this grant or can I apply the grant and then in future use it in a way to furnish resources, therapeutic, whether additional staff member to care for any child that has that complex need. So thank you. Um, and that's, that's so, I'm so sorry to hear that, that, that you had to do that. Um, but with, with this fund, this current round of funding, mm -hmm. it is a requirement that you do have a child currently enrolled who has a, 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 an extra need. Um, so it would need to be that you do have someone currently in your program that you are needing to support. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for all the great questions. Again, we've got the Q&A feed going. Uh, Carly, you're doing a great job keeping up on that. So, Polly, let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Uh, I think you're going to give us an overview of Imagine You Shared Service Hub and uh, website offerings. Yes, yes. Okay. So we will go right into our shared services program. And I will let you all know, um, shared services is brand new. I think we just launched it, I believe in March. Um, so this is a great program. There are two different pathways uh, through the shared services hub. So um, people who just want access to support to that website development tool that we were talking about, um, 
you know, some extra trainings, tools and resources, discounts and benefits, uh, a tool called Policy Wizard that helps you develop and build your policy books um, and expert consultations and advice. Um, this you can get through the discovery track. Um, and then if you want, you can join the connect track, which has all of the great things that the discovery track includes. And in addition to that, um, there are also times that you can meet with other, other providers, other programs, other facilities, get that networking time, have time to create a community. That's actually what we call it. We call it our communities of care. Um, so it's just time for that one-to-one -one consultation, um, getting some specialist help in things like human resources, taxes, bookkeeping. Um, you can get free training for your staff. Uh, and a lot of other benefits that we keep adding more and more to it. Um, one of the things that we're currently working on adding is the uh, support of being able to work with a grant writer um, because there are additional, in addition to the grants that Imagine is able to support, um, there are grants coming out everywhere. So different um, counties, different cities, they're offering their own grants. So if there's a grant that we do not support that you would like assistance with, a part of the Shared Services Hub would be able to give you free time to work one-on-one -on -one with a certified grant writer. So that's a high level overview of shared services. Um, but again, included in here, we have this great tool right here. Um, when you log into this, you are taken to a website builder. So you can, there, well, there's more things in that hub, but one of them that's included is this website builder. And you can then develop a, a professional website with multiple pages, things like enrollment, tuition information, um, pictures of your program, your mission statement, what, you know, what sort of curriculum you offer, all of those things can be included in your website. So this is a great marketing tool. Um, and all of this is free. So there is no cost to participate in either one of these tracks. Um, it, it, it's just a service to you as providers, a way to help build your businesses, get that support that you need um, when you're juggling 10,000 different things like childcare providers do. So that's our shared services hub. We also have a program called Imagine You, and this is our mentorship program. So in here, and uh, again, if you are looking at becoming a family home child care provider, you can sign up for Imagine You. And in this program, you are uh, matched with a mentor who is also a licensed family home child care provider. So for those of you that are already licensed, if you're interested in mentoring someone, that you can sign up to be a mentor and get matched hopefully with an intern. Um, they would then work in your program with you for about 20 hours per month. You guys would work together through different milestones uh, along that path of helping them get licensed. And uh, at, at the end of this, you will both receive a $4,000 grant to invest in your programs. Um, you're also paid along the way for different milestones and interns are paid for those hours that they are interning in their mentors program. So this is a complex program with a lot of details, but I just wanna give you this high level piece of this, that if you are interested or you know someone who's interested in becoming a childcare provider, or if you are interested in being a mentor and helping someone else get licensed, this is something that you can sign up for and um, hopefully you know, go through the process to get uh, approved to be a part of this program. So any questions on either of those? Well, we do have a question from Lori Tudor. Um, and before I get to you, Lori, I'm just, you know, I think now that you've finished with your presentations, Polly, I think we had questions on your last presentations, but I, um, could we also open it up for the other two as well if they have? Let's okay, great. It. Yep, let's it's just free for them all. All. All, right. <laughs> all right, Lori, I'm going to go ahead and uh, allow you to talk. You'll just need to unmute yourself and you'll be on. I just have a question. These two last programs that you went through, they are not offered for friends, family, and neighbor? Imagine you is. So if you, I, um, I previously was a mentor through the Imagine Institute, and I had someone who was doing 
family friend and neighbor care and decided that they wanted to get licensed. And so they did sign up to be an intern and we did work together um, and she was able to get licensed and open her own program. So yes, Imagine You is something that we definitely encourage uh, FFNs to participate in. Okay, awesome, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lori. All right. And we, we actually uh, have been streaming this live on Facebook and we have a question from one of our Facebook audience. Uh, Dana asks, uh, could in-home licensed child care providers apply for the stabilization grant if we are given an initial license, not a full license? Yes. So once you have access to WA Compass, your grant application should uh, appear in there. So um, yeah, you. I, I think that initial license is usually a, a, like a year or maybe it's six months, something like that. Um, but that that still does include you as being open and licensed. All right. And Roxana, I think you've got your hand back up. Go ahead and unmute. I think you can talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I didn't see, I'll have to look on the website again, but if my mother were to get re-licensed and I'm not sure how complex that is, does she have to be a licensed provider just at the time that she applies or previously, for example, such as an FFN that has to be meeting the two months out of the three months and the four months of care out of the last six months. Is that not the situation? So for the complex needs grant, mm -hmm. um, now for stabilization, so two separate grants with two different metrics here. The yeah. stabilization grant, you just have to be open and licensed and you have mm -hmm. to um, agree to staying open through mm -hmm. June 30th of 2022. For the complex needs grant, you had to have served a child on subsidy um, for at least one month between September 1st, 2021 and February and the end of February, 2022. And you had to have a, submitted your invoice for payment prior to March 31st, 2022. As a licensed provider. Yeah. Okay. So then if, for example, my mother got her license next month and she's been right. getting care as an F, I'm sorry, getting paid as an FFN, she would probably not qualify. I, I would I would assume not. However, I, they will be offering two more rounds of this complex needs grant mm. um, next year, and and they are looking at including FFNs at some point. So mm -hmm. that is something that I would maybe continue to monitor. Um, mm -hmm. You know, open your emails. DCYF sends those out. Imagine yeah. sends out emails. Um, we have another partner, Voices of Tomorrow, who is supporting providers as well. They send, they are great at sending texts and emails. Um, so, you know, definitely make sure that you're you're watching these things and, and reading these the, the information that's coming out so that um, when new opportunities expand funding, you are aware of that. I'm sorry, you said, um, you said, what are the dates of having have provided care for um, licensed providers to yeah, apply for the program? I'll go ahead and pull it back up, but it is um, September 1st, 2022 uh -huh. through February 28th, 2022. I'm sorry, September 1st, 2021 through February, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> through February like, okay. 28th. I know that's in the future. Um, <laughs> and then you had to have claimed that by March 31st, 2022. March. Okay. So then, okay. So by, so my son would, okay, well then. So she would have had to already have provided licensed care since we're already in May. Yes. Yeah, as a licensed care provider. That, that's what that's that's how I am interpreting this. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm in, yeah, I'm understanding that. Okay. Like I could verify, but I mean yeah. that that is how I am interpreting it. Yeah, yeah. That's well, okay. Hopefully, Roxana, you can you. connect with Polly too, because yeah. um, I know your your situation is pretty specific. Um, we do yeah. have a few more questions. Um, we have a question here asks talking about the stabilization grant. What can I spend my funds on? All right. So let me go back over to that screen. So the stabilization grant, again, that one has a wide range of allowable expenses. Um, I think it's almost easier to kind of let you know what you, you can't spend funds on um, because the, the allowable funding is so broad. Um, I'm actually looking for... 
that there they have a great spending and documentation guide um, that you can access that breaks down what those different categories are that you can spend those funds on. So I'm going to open that up really quickly. This is the high level right here. So payroll, increasing labor standards, co-payment or tuition waivers, rent, mortgage, operating expenses, utilities, maintenance, mental health supports, food, health and nutrition activities, health and safety, training and COVID-19 response. So when, um, and that's the program and add-on amounts. If you are a licensed program, there's a little bit more specific details around what you can use the workforce amount on. So I'll get down to that section. But this really, if you look at this, it, it really lays out um, how many different spending categories there are. And there are so many options on how you can spend these funds. Um, but if we get down to the workforce amount, I'm trying not to scroll too quickly so I don't wanna make people dizzy. Mm -hmm. um, this has to be used specifically towards your workforce. So bonuses or incentive payments for your employees, um, you know, a sign-on bonus, increasing wages, um, healthcare premiums, those sorts of things. Um, what's great about this is it also tells you how to document those expenses. Um, so for both FFNs and uh, licensed providers, this lets you know if I spend money on this, what's a good way for me to keep track um, so that if I get called for receipt collection. And again, we offer group uh, TA sessions, informational sessions on this documentation and spending guide and our live TAs, they answer questions all day long. Um, so if you even just have a, hey, is this, is this something I can spend it on? You can give us a quick call. We can answer that for you and help you navigate through that. All right, perfect. We have another question asking, will I need to count these grants as income on my tax return? Yes, these are taxable funds. All right, all right. That's a very important thing to know. All right, we have another hand up uh, from Laura. Laura, I'm going to go ahead and um, allow you to talk. Here we go. Apparently, you just got promoted to panelist. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think, Laura, you just need to uh, unmute and you're on. Oh, thank you. I, um, I'm i wondering if you could tell me um, if you guys help fill out the complex need uh, grant because I, I, I am in a very impoverished area and we have a lot of, of high need kids and I, um, I have a very inclusive program, so sometimes I have to staff extra staff already, so it would be very helpful to be able to help with that cost. Um, is that something you guys could help with? And I, I guess I don't even know what I need to just track, like extra staff above ratio in a separate category or something. Yeah, we can, we absolutely can help you with that. So um, our TAs, they can walk you through, they can help you, um, you know, if, you, if you're talking to them about what you're trying to spend the money on, they can use that rubric to help you develop your answers. Um, they can encourage you to maybe, you know, uh, add a little more detail. What, what are you going to use this for? How can we show what you're, what you're going to be doing with this? Um, and they absolutely can do that. And like I said, we also have a grant writer who is able to um, field TA's questions. So sometimes our TA's, if they're not sure, or if they feel like, am I getting this right? They can go back to our grant writer and our grant writer has been providing them with great resources and support as they're assisting people with their, with their questions. So how do I set that up? Because I was going to try to figure out, it's just hard to figure out, like, how much do you ask for? Like, you know, because I have 20 employees, right? And every classroom, you know, has a lot of high needs kids because, well, like I say, we keep all the kids. So we have autistic kids. We have, you know, kids that have not been diagnosed because most kids aren't diagnosed under five, you know, they might be somewhere on an, on a sensory scale. Um, so um, so I just need to track expenses separate for that payroll. And and then also it said you could have therapeutic services. So right now I use free services through Early Achievers as much as I can. But would that allow me to be able to have access to a behavioral therapist that I could pay? Yeah, I mean, you could definitely cost that out and request it in your grant application. Okay. That that's definitely something that they would look at. Um, so again, I, I see that 
Kathleen in the chat has been super helpful. She keeps Thank posting you. our contact information. If okay, you get that. contact us, one of our TAs can definitely assist you. Hey, thank you so much. You guys have a nice evening. Yeah, you too. All right. Well, thank you very much. These are all really great questions. And I think uh, Carly's done a great job answering them all online. You've been doing great doing it, the live questions. And I don't see any more. We don't have any more from the Facebook Live. So I guess before we end a little early here, Polly, do you have any like last uh, words of advice? Oh goodness, please reach out, reach out, reach out. That's that's really that's really it. We have such an amazing team. I think one thing that I forgot to mention, um, our team is primarily people who work in this field. So we use a peer uh, support model at Imagine as much as possible. And the technical assistance team is primarily people who are either licensed family home child care providers themselves, or they have worked in programs. So when you are working with our TAs, they know your work. They understand what you do. Um, when you ask them a question about a certain expense that somebody else might go, well, huh, why, why? Why do you need that much toilet paper? They get it. They know exactly why you need that much toilet paper. So um, they're just a really great team. They're really kind. They're really patient. Um, they're really knowledgeable. So please feel free, reach out to us. Um, if for some reason, you know, you don't get through that first call, leave a voicemail. We return our calls within one business day. Um, and we would just love to support you all. So well, and I think we've got some hands while we were doing okay. kind of like final words of wisdom. So good. Yay. All right, Felicia, we haven't heard from Felicia. Let's go ahead. Felicia, I'm going to go ahead and allow you to talk. So you just need to unmute and you will be on. Oh, oh good evening. Um, I wanted to know, um, did you have any information available about um, the Working Washington Round 5? Is, is that a grant? It is. I'll jump in there. We will okay, be doing yeah, I'm not aware. <laughs> yeah, so so def, definitely keep in tune with our One East Side Spark. Uh, we have a webinar all lined up with an uh, with, uh, overview of how to apply for that, and I believe that is in June. So if you go to One East Side dot org slash spark s-p-a-r-k, um, you'll be able to see the upcoming webinar and, and register for it. All right, Felicia. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roxana, you have your hand up again. Go ahead. <clears throat> Just one last question. Um, you had mentioned that Polly would be the one for my particular situation. Would I just be using that email, the generic email, to get in contact with Polly? Yes. We are, we, are, we are not a huge team. So when, oh, okay. <laughs> when you send that email, you are going to, it is going to be reviewed by our amazing program assistant, Sherry Fry, and okay. she will send it right over to me. So it, okay. it won't get lost. It won't get lost in a, in a void, I promise. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Roxana. All right. We have a, another hand up. Uh, again, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, Kamanchanak. Combs, and I'm going to go ahead and allow you to talk, and you should just unmute, and you'll be on. Hi, Krishna. You pronounced my name right. Oh, good. So, I said I have a question about stabilization grants. If you already applied for last year and you already got it, so you cannot apply again, right? Correct. There's only one round for the stabilization grant. Okay. Thank you. Wait, wait. I, I want to ask a question. You, are you you're talking about the one that opened up after October? Uh, yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. There were smaller grants that rolled out last spring. So I wanted to make sure uh, that I asked that I wasn't. Uh, no, I just got licensed on November because the oh. competitive yeah. grants, I don't have any subsidy. So I cannot apply even I have the, the delay developmental, right? Yes. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. These are all great questions. These are all great questions. All right. Well, uh, I want to remind everyone we are recording this webinar. And so we'll be sending a link of this out to, to all of you who are viewing it. Uh, we will also send out a transcript of all the questions and answers. And there's 43 over there. So there's a lot of, a lot of answers in there. We'll also be sending you the links uh, to the slides and the resources as a follow up to you. Um, and I know, oh, we have another, Roxana, do you have another question? Here, let me hold on. 
I'm so sorry. This is oh, this is the last question. So is this a one-time thing or every year if my mother keeps taking care of my son as a certified license when she's certified, can she apply for the grant as well as the FFA? It's every year or it's a that, one-time? That is, that is a great, great, great question. Uh, and, and you're talking about the stabilization grant or the complex needs? We'll just say the, the stabilization grant. So the stabilization grant, uh, that was a one time, th this is a one time grant. Um, we have not been made aware of any additional rounds of funding for that. Um, I will say that I did forget to let everyone know that with the complex needs grant, um, providers, and again, right now, I know that it's not open for FFNs at this time, but you can get one grant per fiscal year. So if you were to apply in this grant cycle, and then um, you were awarded, you would also be able to potentially apply in one of the upcoming grant cycles, depending on what uh, the eligibility looks like in those future rounds. But yes, with the stabilization grant, it was a one time and we have not heard of any additional rounds of funding being opened up for that. All right, and Roxana, I muted you so we could hear Polly. So if you want to unmute, sorry about that. <laughs> you know what? That was my only question. All so right, the, perfect. Got to make sure the, we get, yeah, the, got the, it the, all. Yeah. All right. Well, if um, since I don't see any more questions again, you know, we're going to be sending these resources to you. Also, I think we've got links to how you can connect directly with Polly and her team over there. So I want to uh, go ahead and we'll just go ahead and wrap the program. So um, I want to thank Polly and Carly for giving us your time today. Uh, Polly, this was great having an overview of these three programs. We appreciate you very much. I wanna say thank you again to all our partners on the East Side who are working hard to support the business community. Wanna make sure you bookmark this site, uh, oneeastside.org slash spark. There you will find key resources like when that Working in Washington 5 webinar is coming up in June. Information on our one-on-one -on -one advising, which is at no cost to our businesses, our weekly webinars and new grant opportunities as they become available. And I wanna give a big thank you to you for participating today. So until we see you again, this concludes our program. Thank you.